Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. We're with Wikibon.org, and this is the Cube. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we find the best guests. We bring you their knowledge and share with you our community. I'm at D Vellante, he's at Jeffrey F. Kelly. You can tweet us, uh, hashtag for the conference is uh, pound TCC13, Tableau Customer Conference, TCC13. And we're here in DC, we're live all day, today and tomorrow. The, today's mostly the customer day, we're unpacking case studies, talking to Tableau customers, their user base, to find out how they're using Tableau, how visualization is impacting their use of data, how it's driving value for their organizations. Simon Jean is here, he's the business analytics director at LinkedIn. LinkedIn, as everybody knows, is a tr tremendous company, growing like crazy, one of the stars of Silicon Valley. It is a data company. Simon, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank so, you. tell us a little bit about your role at, uh, at LinkedIn and, and how you're using data. Great. Uh, my role at LinkedIn is, uh, uh, LinkedIn you know, is one of the most data-driven companies in the world. My job is uh, how to use data to empower internal employees to make them more productive, efficient, and more successful. So, and uh, we cover, currently we cover sales team, marketing team, uh, product team, engineering, custom service and operation. And uh, we use the data to help them to be more productive. Okay, so you're a data guy, but you've not always been, a, I guess, not been directly a data guy. You were a neurosurgeon, right? Uh, so yeah. so <laughs> talk about how a neurosurgeon becomes a data geek. <laughs> how, why, how did that all come about? Great, uh, that's about 10 years ago. I was uh, working in a cancer hospital in my native country, China. And uh, I think I operate about you know, 350 you know, different type of you know, brain operations. And I work in the brain tumor center. Um, but you know, my passion at that moment was about the computer, internet, you know, even video games. You know, I like to you know, play computers a lot. I think that's what was, was my, my passion about you know, at that moment. And uh, you know, neurosurgeon career, it's, uh, it's a great career, by the way. And I'm, I met a lot of amazing, you know, super intelligent, you know, um, uh, doctors, uh, but I just feel it's not designed for me, right? You know, and uh, I like to do something I really enjoy. That's the reason I left the hospital and then started you know, looking for career paths in IT, computer, and uh, uh, in the internet, you know, area. So, and uh, I came here, starting you know, starting my MBA degree. Uh, I was very lucky, you know, to uh, find a intern uh, position to do uh, SAP related programming, you know. At that moment, I started, you know, uh, found out this amazing database, you know, system. A lot of, you know, really amazing logic, you know, connect all the dots together. For example, you click a button here, you know, let's say 100 miles, you know, somewhere, you know, in the facility, you know, they will see the transaction happening, and then they can be more efficient. Yeah. Okay, so, so you became a data scientist, essentially, right? Yes. You know, uh, so and, and now that's your, your role. We call you a data scientist, right? That's, uh, that's you consider yourself, I presume, a data scientist, right? Uh, yes, I was yeah. a data scientist at LinkedIn. Yeah, so, so um, okay, so now you're, you're at LinkedIn. Uh, tell us about how uh, you use visualization to, you know, let's say, unlock the power of data. Sounds cliche, but it's true, right? If you can't visualize it, sometimes it's too hard to understand, you can't act on it. So, so talk a little bit about how you use visualization in the context of data. Absolutely. Uh, at LinkedIn, you know, so we believe uh, uh, data needs to be explained, right? You know, a lot of people talk about the big data. Actually, our mission at LinkedIn is how to convert this, you know, uh, petabytes, gigabytes, you know, terabytes data into very quick and uh, small insight. We want to convert this, you know, petabyte data into kilobytes and then deliver the message in a very quick, easy, and scalable format. And uh, that's say, uh, you know, uh, there's a painting you know, from Monet called you know, Haystack, right? So the concept is the same, you know. At LinkedIn, we believe, you know, analysts, you know, should, you know, uh, build a report, like you make a painting. 
you know, like an artist. So how you visualize it, you know, and uh, make it extremely simple, easy, and straightforward, and make people can understand, you know, in one second, you know. Uh, my job is not creating fancy but complex, you know, charts for our audience, you know. My job is uh, I want to visualize the data in very, very easy and simple format. Everyone read it, they can get idea, you know, uh, quickly. And then they can use the insight to drive business results. So, and that's our core concept of uh, LinkedIn uh, data visualization, you know, particularly internally. So, that, so that the, the driver was to simplify things, make it scalable, make it more consumable. So, um, talk about how you do that. Uh, I presume we used Tableau to do that, but w what was life like kind of before and after? Take us through the sort of the history of how you've been using uh, sure. visualization. Sure, and uh, uh, my first year at LinkedIn, you know, I was a data scientist, and uh, the first year, you know, I closed, I think, about 500 different type of requests, including building models, deliver reports, you know, help, you know, marketers, sales people, you know, to analyze their campaigns, close deals. What we found is, uh, you know, the way people access data, actually, it was not that easy, right? You know, big data, most of the time, means slow processing complex data structure, it's not a very simple and uh, quick. So before, you know, sometimes the people need to wait for, let's say, 20 hours, hours, right, you know, at least sometimes by days, you know, to get insights. We found out, you know, that's not scalable. That's not, you know, empower a lot of people you, uh, to access insights. What we did is we start shopping, you know, uh, looking for solutions, and then, uh, about uh, two years ago, and I came to the, uh, you know, the same in you know, the TCC 2011, I started exploring how Tableau can help us. I think the concept, you know, Tableau is amazingly in a match with our LinkedIn uh, core principle, right? I talk about you know, how an artist is drawing a painting. Uh, Tableau is using Tableau as a canvas, right? Analysts, you know, can use color visualization to express themselves to deliver an uh, insightful uh, data message. Start from there. We build a system by using Tableau, visualize the amazing uh, LinkedIn data into very precise, easy to, uh, to be understood, and uh, uh, quick message to empower almost every single employee in the company. Okay, right so now. I, I want to follow up on that metaphor, yeah. if I may, Jeff, yeah. and then let Jeff Kelly jump in here. Sure. So the, the user is the artist in this example, is that right? Yes, uh, Tableau user, right? Yeah, the Our Tableau analyst, user. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. they're, so, they're, so they're not the end user necessarily. Not the end user. Okay, so they've got to be able to draw and, and understand textures and, and colors. Yeah, okay. colors, yeah. Okay, so because the, the user may not be a, a good artist, maybe a user like, like me, I can't draw, so I would be a bad artist, but, you, but, uh, but I know what I like. So I would in now interface with an analyst, is that right? Is that how it works organizationally? Yes, you know, our analysts you know, work with all of our different teams. For example, sales people, marketers, you know, uh, PMs, product managers, and uh, also operation, you know, related uh, folks. We understand what they need, you know, because they, they send us a lot of requests before, right, you know, almost every day, a lot of requests. We learn from the what, what's being asked, and then we provide what truly they need. A lot of times the people ask a lot, actually what they truly need is only one number, right? This is good or bad, you know, how can I close this deal? Which person I should contact to? And then we visualize that, you know, and then provide the, let's say, the art to them. They can appreciate, you know, the information and then use that quickly to make a, uh, to make a decision. And you use Tableau to build these dashboards and, yes. and these paintings. Yes. Um, and, yes. And, and it makes people more productive. Can you share like any examples, or not examples, but any metrics on how much more productive, or even, uh, you know, uh, I cannot share exactly you know, yeah. uh, the you usage you know, mm -hmm. within LinkedIn, you know, and, uh, but at high level, I can uh, say this, we've been 100 times more productive than before. Right. Actually, the number is Two higher orders than magnitude. <laughs> okay. yeah, you know, hundreds of times you know, more productive right. than before. Wow. Well, yeah. Simon, you touched on a lot of really interesting topics. Uh, you know, one thing that struck me was you mentioned <laughs> you know, it used to take hours or days uh, to get some of these insights and some of these mm -hmm. uh, visualizations to your, to your end users, um, it, which to you in your world is a long time. I think about some of the uh, other companies and attendees we've talked to who are in other industries, maybe not as data savvy, where that would be quite quick for them, <laughs> where sometimes it takes days and weeks or even longer. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing that you touched on and I'd like you to expand on a little bit was uh, simplicity of the data visualizations. We heard that from our previous guest uh, from GE, also talking about keep things simple with data visualizations. Yeah, yeah. 
And as we cover this market, you know, we go to uh, other events, uh, we see data scientists and we see competitions. The most, uh, and some of these data visualizations are very elaborate and uh, they're, they're very pretty, but it's, sometimes you're looking at them and you're saying, but it doesn't necessarily get across mm -hmm. exactly, I don't completely understand what they're trying to get across. It looks beautiful, but uh, they're not simple. Can you talk a little bit about that concept of simplicity in data visualization and why mm -hmm. that's so important? Because of, you know, in nowadays market, people are so busy, right, you know. I, I saw a lot of charts, you know, even before LinkedIn uh, career, very fancy, but complex. I, I told the team, I said, hey, I'm an analytical professional. If I need to spend, like, say, five minutes mm -hmm. to really understand, you know, the charts, there's a problem. Because of, you know, we want to deliver precise, accurate, easy message to the audience, you know, right away. So they can leverage, you know, this to make decisions. Uh, the point is, we don't want them to spend hours a day to, to enjoy, let's say, more nice painting, to understand what's the background story, right? We want them to have a quick and you know, business insight and then drive value. So that's why, you know, I think, you know, it's, uh, easy and uh, simple to understand is extremely important, right? Mm -hmm. Providing fancy charts is not my mission, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, because of the speed. We found out, you know, when we provide a very simple and straightforward, you know, insight, you know, audience adopted in a very, very amazing way, you know. For example, in adoptions, I, you know, uh, David just asked me, pre, post, right? Pre was, uh, let's say, tens of, you know, employees use it, right? After is uh, thousands, right? You know, we see this in a extremely, you know, hyper growth of adoption because it's useful, it's easy. They can explain. They need only you know, get back to the data scientist or analyst to understand what this number mean. Why this color, but not that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that simple is the most important you know, factor mm -hmm. for success. Um, you know, with your colleagues, not necessarily LinkedIn, but uh, but elsewhere, your your the world of data scientists. Do you find that is that is that a, a uh, this you know this concept of sim uh, simplicity? Is this something that's uh, lacking? Do you think in a lot of uh, data scientists and others out there trying to maybe get a little bit too elaborate Plan. with, with uh, the tools and the, and the technology that allow you to create these visualizations? Uh, so, and uh, I think that's, you know, draw back you know, to the, our basic un understanding about uh, what is the data science, right? You mm -hmm. know, my personal understanding about science, science must be used by a lot, a lot of people to make sure science applied, right, you know, empower everyone to be more productive and efficient, we have to keep that very simple. And that's why, you know, the data science, a lot of people think, oh, this is a science, right, this is um, like a Einstein, you know, a formula in the notebook or somewhere in the library. No, the science, you know, should be existing everywhere, right? You know, make our life, you know, a lot of better and easy. That's my basic understanding of data science. Data science means, you know, we need to productionize this and then empower Everyone, that's mm -hmm. I call science. That's why you know. So there's some schools of people thinking about data science is fancy, you know, attractive, you know, cool, right? You know, to be honest, you know, from our perspective, I think you know the action, what people can do about it, you know, only being interested is not enough. You know, mm -hmm. we need to provide a valuable information and make people take action and to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you've said that uh, if you focus enough time and thought on the hardest problems, you mm -hmm. will ultimately solve them. Uh, I know that's your philosophy. What hard problems are you working on that you can talk about that, that needs to be, need to be solved, or just in general that you think need to be solved? Uh, in general, I think you know, as an analytical professional, uh, the biggest challenge in my career is how to leverage science and make a lot of people access information, be more productive, right? Before, my personal feeling is, only a very small user group have the luxury can access the data and insight because the whole flow is complex and slow. So the largest challenge is, you know, uh, that the people, let's say, uh, I support, they ask me, Simon, can you provide us, you know, insights? Let's say after I click the button, in one second, in two seconds, I can get what I need. You know, mm -hmm. before it was days, weeks, or hours, right? Right now they ask for one second, two seconds. You know, no longer than three seconds. That's a requirement I had before. It was very, very challenging. I told them at that moment, I never seen anything like, you know, like this kind of fast. Mm -hmm. you know, it's impo it's almost impossible. But you know, in the world, there's nothing that's impossible. If people have passion and drive, then do it. And then finally, we make it happen. So yeah. uh, how do you see that, the, the ability of democratizing uh, data and visualization uh, and, and extending it to a much wider group of users, how do you see that impacting, um, obviously we know how it's impacting companies like LinkedIn and uh, some of the web scale companies, but how do you see that impacting larger 
industry, whether it's in, in more traditional industries like uh, retail or manufacturing, um, you know, what is it, is it simply a productivity gain? Or do you see it, could it potentially change the way we do business and lead to new business models? I mean, what, what do you think the impact of all this uh, democratizing data will have on the market? This is a great question. Uh, I personally believe, you know, I mean, basic, what is ana analytics, right? Analytics is about use data uh, to learn history and then re-predict the future, right? That's the basic concept of an analytics. So only predicting f uh, future is not good enough. The way after we predict that would happen and what we can do to change history, to make history, uh, more, sorry, to change the future, to make future better. That's the core mission of analytics. I can see, you know, data and insight you will know, change people's life in a dramatic way. This is not only for LinkedIn or, you know, a social network company or internet company, but also everywhere, right? We will change, you know, how people uh, to be more productive, right? Second, we will change the way people do business, you know, how to connect with other people. Third, you know, I think the information will help us you know, to uh, do better, right? Before people spend hours or days you know, collecting information, make a decision. For example, let's say I want to buy a house, right? You know, I need to do all sorts of research. How about uh, someday? Someday there is a system can tell us right away this is your dream house, you know, which you can buy right now based on your budget, you know, you know which the school you need, you know, which the uh, community you will, you will enjoy. Let's say in a seconds, you don't need to waste your time, you know, shopping around. People can save that time to enjoy their life. How about we do that? That's very basic information. And also we can use data to predict disease, right? You know, before I was a doctor, let's say today, we use big data, you know, right, to understand why people get answer. When we understand why, we can prevent it. You know, mm -hmm. that will save millions of people's lives. That's, I think, that my passion about why data is uh, impactful for human beings you know, and life. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, my co-host, John Furrier, and I have interviewed a couple times, Jeff Hammerbacher, Mm -hmm. who was the uh, chief scientist at Cloudera, he was at Facebook. I don't know if you know Jeff, but uh, yeah, interestingly, Jeff, he's yeah. took an opposite path. He went from being a data scientist and now he's, now he's an MD at uh, Mount Sinai in New York. <laughs> right. so, but uh, he's, he's very famous for the quote saying, the best minds of my generation are trying to figure out how to get people to click on ads <laughs> you know, using data. <laughs> um, but I think there's, there's, even Jeff would admit, there's some socioeconomic benefit coming out of that. But, um, and you gave you know, a number of good examples. Do you ever see yourself getting back into it's a medicine? Uh, why not, you know, why not? I think, you know, medicine and the data analytics on the back end, they are very, very well connected, you know. Actually, the analytics or medicine, we just try to uh, decode, you know, the, the rule on the back end, right? Very basic, but beautiful rules. I would say someday, you know, after I finish my, let's say, data journey, right, uh, learn more, and then uh, know how to leverage data to change people's life, you know, Someday we can apply all of these, you know, amazing, you know, methodologies and tools and solutions, and back to the me medical field, and then empower, you know, to change patients' mm -hmm. lives, right? You know, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there's a, uh, a there's so much potential in the healthcare industry, um, but of course we know with, uh, you know, there are a lot of obstacles in the way as well with uh, regulations and other things that that need to be overcome. But really, there is so much potential. We're actually going to have a, a healthcare uh, practitioner, Piedmont, come on later and talk a little bit about how they're using Tableau and. Uh, yeah. data visualization in the healthcare field, but I think you're absolutely right. That's absolutely. one area that really is ripe for innovation in that sense. Well, Simon, That's thanks great. very much for coming on theCUBE and sharing the LinkedIn story and your personal story. Fascinating and I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, David. Okay, yeah. so I mentioned, of course, John Furrier before, my, uh, my regular co-host, uh, Jeff Kelly, sitting in. John is uh, in Silicon Valley on a personal commitment, couldn't be here. Hi, John, I hope you're watching and, uh, and a shout, shout out to you. Uh, Koi Gupta is up next. Koi is from Paychex. We're going to, again, today is customer day at the Tableau customer conference. It's all about the customers. Uh, we're going to hear from them. Uh, Koi is a practitioner at Paychex using data, so keep right there. I'm Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's production of the Tableau customer conference. We're live in DC. We'll be right back after this word. <laughs>